Good evening, everyone. So we're holding a Perik Membez. <clears throat> to recap what we spoke about last week, so that the Rebbe said <clears throat> he brought down from the Gemara. Thank you. The Gemara says that <clears throat> the Meishar Rabbeinu turns to Klal Yisrael and says. What does Hashem want of you? All He wants of you is to fear Hashem. And when the Gemara says, the Gemara says, that's all? Is Yira a small thing? Is it a tri- something which is so trivial that you can say, that's all that Hashem wants? So the Gemara answers, Lagabi Moshe, Mil That yeah, for Moshe was a small thing. Which obviously raises the question, that how, how, does, that, uh, how does that resolve the issue? Moshe Rabbeinu is talking to Klal Yisrael. And he's saying what Hashem wants of them. So how is the fact that from Moshe Rabbeinu, Yira might be a milsa zutrisa, Yira might be a small thing, how does that resolve the issue? So the Alter Rebbe begins the conversation by saying that in truth, every single one of us has a little of Moshe Rabbeinu within us. And why is that? Because Moshe Rabbeinu, is one of the Shiva Rahim, is one of the seven shepherds of Kal Yisrael. And the job of the seven shepherds is that each one of them, they feed Kal Yisrael, like a shepherd that feeds its flock. They feed Kal Yisrael with another one of Hashem's Midas. And Moshe Rabbeinu, what does he feed Kal Yisrael with with Das? Because Moshe Rabbeinu, his Neshama, is rooted in the sphera of Das, in the attribute of Das in the world of Atsilus. And therefore, every single one of us receives from Moshe Rabbeinu this quality of Das. And as we mentioned, the idea of Das is the idea of connection, not only to be able to understand something, but to actually to be able to, to connect with it. <clears throat> we gave some examples about this last week. A very, a, very, a very simple example of this is the idea of, you mentioned that you're making a bar mitzvah of your enakal this week, and that mamish leads into the conversation. Because if you look throughout the world, the age of maturity 13? is not 13. The age of maturity in the United States, how old do you have to be to, to vote? How old do you have to be 18. to buy alcohol, right? Somewhere around 18, somewhere around there to drive, all these things, you need to be older. Until then, you're considered a minor. And um, the age of maturation in society is not at the age of 13 and certainly not at the age of 12. So why in Yiddishkeit? Sorry? Not anymore. Not anymore. So why is it that in Yiddishkeit um, we have this, let's be honest, a little boy or a little girl. You ever, you ever went to bar mitzvah? Or a bas mitzvah? And like, wow. <laughs> That's a little, that, 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 they're, they're still little children. But nevertheless, we call them, now they're a gadol. And they're mechuy of the mitzvahs. And they're considered to be an adult. What happens at the age of 12 and 13 years old, 12 for a girl and 13 for a boy. So the answer is in halacha that until then, a person, a child, um, a child lacks this idea of das. A katan in das. Whereas when someone becomes a bar mitzvah, they're called a bar das. Suddenly they have das. So das is really related to that. What does that mean? That means that a child, a child can be very smart. A child can be... Um, very bright and very knowledgeable and can uh, be very learned in many, many different areas and be much smarter and much more knowledgeable than an adult. But what's the difference between the child and the adult? So you can have a child who theoretically studies economics and understands the whole economic system and how it works and exactly what a dollar is. But when you give that dollar to the child, what's the child going to do with it? He's going to run to the store and he's going to buy himself a toy or a candy. He doesn't really get the value of a dollar. What does he mean he doesn't get it? He doesn't understand it, he understands it. He's a high IQ, he's a smart kid. But he doesn't connect it, he doesn't relate it. Everything that a child knows, it doesn't become, they don't have the ability to have this das, that it should become their reality. 
Whereas an adult, an adult might not be as smart, an adult might not be as knowledgeable, but an adult has the capacity of das. And that's why at the age of 12 or 13, a child becomes mechuyiv in mitzvahs. Because to be mechuyiv in mitzvahs, you have to be able to be held responsible for what you have done. And without das, you can't be responsible. If, if you don't have the capacity of das, if you don't have the ability to have das, the ability to, I mean, obviously a cotton has das in smaller ways, but full, full-fledged das then you can't be held responsible for your actions because you don't really appreciate the gravity or the severity of that which you are doing, and nor do you, um, or do you really appreciate the greatness, on the other hand, of a mitzvah. So therefore, the idea of chiyuv b'mitzvahs, when does a person become a chiyuv b'mitzvahs, that's when they have das. So is that when they physically are, are mature? Not necessarily. We know that in the Torah, when they wanted to count the Yidin, it was Ben Asrim Shana, right? From 20 years old, because Kol Yetzit Sava, until, until 20, you're not physically ready to go out to battle. <clears throat> and there are even also certain halachas, when the, that, uh, for example, that up until the age of 20, a child can't uh, buy or sell real estate that he or she has inherited from their parent. There are certain restrictions, but at the end of the day, in terms of being mechuy of b'mitzvahs, what you need is this basic idea of das, and das comes in at the age of Barabbas Mitzvah. So Moshe Rabbeinu, this idea that we have Das, that comes from Moshe Rabbeinu. So that's number one. And ultimately, where we're leading with this all is that in order to be able to have Yerush Hashem, you need to have Das. So how do we get Das? The first thing we have to know is we get that from Moshe Rabbeinu. So even though Moshe Rabbeinu isn't here already for thousands of years, but as the Gemara says, Ma'al halon e'medu meshamesh afkan e'medu meshamesh that just like Moshe Rabbeinu beforehand, he was serving on our behalf in heaven. He is now serving on our behalf in heaven. And he, together with the other six Reim, Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, although they're in the Ilm HaEmes, but their job hasn't finished, and they're still doing their job. And the job of Moshe Rabbeinu is to be Mashpi Das, is to give Das to all of Kal Yisrael. That's step number one. And now we're going to move to step number two in Das. And we're going to start on page Nuntes, which is opposite of page 116. Eight lines from the bottom where it says, V'oid Zeis. is moreover, Yasser al Kain, in addition to the das that we get from Moshe Rabbeinu, Bechol Dorf Adair, in every single generation, Yerdin Nitzutzin, Minishmas Moshe Rabbeinu Olav Ashalom, sparks of the Neshama of Moshe Rabbeinu come down, Umislapshin, and they enter and they enclose themselves, Beguf Venefesh, Al Chachme Hadir. In the bodies and in the neshamas of the chachamim of the der, eni ha'eda, the eyes of the congregation, lelame das es ha'am, and it is the job of the leaders of the generation, the leaders of the generation who have within them the sparks of Moshe Rabbeinu's neshama, is to teach das to the nation. So the late, sorry. No, no, everyone gets das from Moshe Rabbeinu. But well, there are certain people who they don't just get some das from Moshe Rabbeinu, their neshama is actually a nitzutz, a spark of Moshe Rabbeinu. And the word spark is very precise because it doesn't say that it's ha'ara. Ha'ara means a, a ray or emanation. A spark is a part of the neshama. In other words, in the chachamim of the dirt, in the leaders of the generation, in the Rosh Bnei Yisrael, there's actually a spark of Moshe Rabbeinu and their job is further is to teach the Yidin to have Das, and to teach the Yidin about the greatness of Hashem, and to cause that the Yidin should serve Hashem with heart and soul. Because in order to serve Hashem with, with one's heart, in other words, with Avas Hashem and with Yiris Hashem, that is dependent on Das. Kamesh as the Pasuk says, Das alakei avicha. If you have Das about Hashem, then vavdeu believe shalim v'nefesh chafetza. Then we serve Hashem with a complete heart and with a desirous neshama. Ula asiduay mer. And the future it says, Ula yilam duishes reayu. In the future we won't need to have teachers to teach us Das. Leimer duuas Hashem. We won't need anyone to teach us das. Kikulam yiduay si v'goymer. Because in the future when Mashiach comes, everyone will have das. So here, 
for the second time in Tanya, the first time in Tanya, the Rebbe talks about this is in Perik Beis, but for the second time in Tanya, we're introduced to the concept of a Rebbe. Because to be clear over here, we're not talking over here about wise people who learn a lot of Torah and know the whole Shas and maybe even know all of Kabbalah and all of this. This is not about wise people. We're talking here about people of the elevated status, people whose neshama is actually a nitzutz, is a nitzutz of Moshe Rabbeinu, because every single generation has a Moshe Rabbeinu. And their job is to teach everyone, to teach everyone das. And this raises obviously a few questions. Don't we all have the capacity for das? Why do I need a Rebbe? Why can't I use my own mind and develop my own das, number one. And number two, why does the Rebbe have to have, why does his neshama have to be a nitzutz of the neshama of Moshe Rabbeinu? Isn't it enough if he's a very wise person and a very learned person and has learned a lot and he'll teach us about the greatness of Hashem? So why do I need a Rebbe? And why does my, and even if I need a Rebbe, why does the Rebbe have to be a nitzutz of Moshe Rabbeinu? Why is das dependent on Moshe Rabbeinu? A marshal is given on this. If you if you're not an artistic person, if you're not an artist, and let's say you were to watch an artist drawing a portrait of someone, so you'd look at the way he draws he draws eyes, and you'd say, "Okay, I could do that too. He's, it's, that's an oval. I could do an oval." And then you see a nose. Oh, that's that's like a rectangle. I, I can do that also. The mouth, that's uh, that shape. And you, you, you're you watching and you watch every single, uh, you know, he's making a line over here like this and he's making a circle and he's making an oval and making a square and a rectangle and a wavy line. And then you go to your piece of paper and you do the same thing. And what's it going to look like? What went wrong? You're copying the artist 100%. What went wrong? Wherever he made a circle, you made a circle. Wherever he made the, you know, that kind of shape line, you made that kind of a shape of a line. What's the difference? The difference is that the artist isn't drawing circles and rectangles and squares. What's the artist drawing? A face. The artist doesn't even know that there's a circle and an oval and a rectangle. By the artist, he has in his mind the face, and he's drawing the face. Now, how does the face express itself? It expresses itself in different shapes. But if you only have the shapes and you don't have in your mind the actual face, whatever you're going to draw is not going to have any life to it whatsoever. The reason why what the artist draws has life is because he's not focused actually so much on the, the, the different types of shapes and lines, what he's doing, but in his mind he's just transferring the picture onto a piece of paper and he's doing it through those lines. What is the nimshal? What is the analog that we're trying to bring out from over here? We said earlier, last week, in last week's shir, we said that Moshe Rabbeinu, it's not that he was a very smart person. It's not that he had a very powerful capacity for das even. But we said that the neshama of Moshe Rabbeinu is mushrish bedas ha'elyon she beyud sfir is the atzilu sam yuchadas b'matzilu and baruchu. The neshama of Moshe Rabbeinu is rooted in the sphera of das of atzilus, which is absolutely united with Hashem. In fact, I think we mentioned this in the past that by every single time in the Torah where you have a name that's repeated, for example, where it says Avraham Avram, we say every morning in the evening, Vayimer Avraham Avram. And Tehros says Yaakov, Yaakov, and Parshas Vayigash. Whenever you have a name repeated, there's always a psik. The Zohar points out there's always a psik in between the two names. Psik means if you look in the Torah, there's sometimes there's a line between two words, a, a vertical line. A ditch. Right? Like you have even by Hashem, Hashem Kel Rachum, between the first Hashem and the second Hashem, you have, it's not a dash, it's an inverted dash. It's an upward, it's a vertical one. And why is that? So it's explained in Kabbalah that there is Avraham and there is Avraham. There's Avraham's neshama as it is in its source. 
And then there's Avram's neshama as it came down here. And even though that Avram Avinu, even as he came down here, had a tremendously high neshama, but at the end of the day, the neshama in the goof was not the same as the neshama as it was above. There's only one exception to this rule, and that is when it says in the Torah, in Parashish Shmois, it says, Moisha, Moisha, the first time that Hashem calls out to Moisha, he says, Moisha, Moisha. So in the words of the Zayar, Moisha, Moisha, loy psik taima begavayu, there is no line, which tells us that Moisha Rabbeinu, as his neshama was down here, was the exact same as it was Lamaila. In fact, that's even alluded to in Moisha's name, which is Moisha kimin hamai mishisihu, that he, he was drawn from the water. The water represents the hidden worlds, what's called the Alma de Iskasia. And his neshama was directly drawn from the hidden world, and it was plunked over here in Taguf. But as the neshama was over here, it was as it was Lamaila. And that's why when Moshe Rabbeinu was born, what does it say? That the neshmala habay is kulo era, the whole house became filled with light. Why? Because of the incredible, intense power of the neshama. Now we know that Torah is Torah is Hashem, right? A rise of the a rise of a good shabrich or kulo chad. Torah is one with Hashem. Who of the chachmas yachad? Hashem is one with this chachma. So when Moshe was teaching Torah, and Moshe was teaching, you know, and whether he was teaching the people about the greatness of Hashem, or whether he was teaching about Shnai Meichs and Betalus. To Moshe Rabbeinu, those were the lines and circles. But what he was really teaching the Yidin was, was Hashem. When a Yid sat by Moshe Rabbeinu and he learned, so the words he heard were the words of Torah, and the words of speaking about the greatness of Hashem or any other halacha. But what was he experiencing at that moment? He was experiencing Hashem. It was Hashem as it was expressed through the words of Torah, like the face that's expressed through the circles. And then you have other teachers, people who are very wise and very learned, and maybe even wonderful, beautiful people, but when they're teaching Torah, they're drawing lines and circles. They're not in touch with the godliness, with the elokus in it. To them, it's just, and that's why it doesn't have the same life. And for a yid to experience das, for a yid really to connect to Hashem, it's not enough to learn Torah. It's not even enough to have a great teacher. You need to have a nitzutz of Meishe Rabbeinu. You need to have someone who has the neshama of Meishe Rabbeinu, a spark of the neshama of Meishe Rabbeinu. Someone who when they teach Torah, they're teaching Hashem. Who steht? No. He says, In other words, there's a neshama, and inside it, there is from Meish Rabbeinu, there is some das from Meish Rabbeinu. When it comes to the tzaddikim, it says something different. It's a different, it's a different madrega. And by the way, interestingly, the Rebbe points this out, that it says that the nitzutz of Meish Rabbeinu comes down, and is mislabish in the guf and in the nefesh. It's not as if that there is already an existing neshama and it comes in. No, it's in the guf and it's in the nefesh. In fact, it's even in the guf. And in fact, he says guf before nefesh. Which tells you, and this is a very interesting insight about tzaddikim, that the guf of a tzaddik is also holy. And therefore, the guf of a tzaddik also expresses Hashem. It's not only the neshama and the divrei Torah of a tzaddik, but even the guf of a tzaddik. And that's why there were many of the, many great tzaddikim from the Talmidim of Baal Tov and the Talmidim of the Talmidim who they didn't say Torah. I know there's certain, there are certain Hasidic uh, dynasties where the Minig is the Rebbe doesn't say Torah. If I, if I remember correctly, I think Stalin is one such, uh, one such dynasty. And, the, and the, it's not the only one. So what's the purpose of going to Rebbe if he's not saying Torah, for whatever reason? But the answer is that it's beguf uva nefesh. It's not only in the nefesh, it's actually the guf. Seeing a tzaddik is seeing, is seeing a lakus, is seeing godliness. Yeah. They say that... Um, the Shpaler Zeda. The Shpaler Zeda. 
He was a big tzaddik and he was a Talmud of the Magad of Mezich. Mezich and Magad. He was, a, he was a big tzaddik and he was famous for Pidyan Shfuyim. That was his, a um, lot of stories about him. So he said that my colleagues, they go to their Rebbe to learn Torah. And I go to my Rebbe to see how he ties his shoes. <laughs> and I'm sure he didn't mean to say that he's not listening to the Rebbe's Torah. But what he was trying to say is, to me, it's not only about the Rebbe's Torah. I'm also, to me, when the Rebbe is tying his shoes, that's also, that's also a Gili <clears throat> It's what's behind the Torah. It's a lakus. Yeah. It says here it comes into Hakim Ador, so it's Hakim Ador is plural. So like, does that mean we're saying there's multiple people in one door that are on this level? So it could be understood that way. It could be understood that Hakim Ador is in reference to every generation. They are the Chachamim throughout the generations. In general, we know that there's, uh, there's one Moshe Rabbeinu in every generation. But it would seem also that there are other people, there are Tzadikim in every generation, not only one, who also have this capacity. Around 25 years ago, this was um, after the Rebbe had his stroke. The Rebbe already at that point wasn't speaking. And so my father, who was a Shliach, in Michigan, so he came into New York and he brought with him a group a, uh, uh, for a pagisha. And in that group, there was a teenager, an older teenager, probably around 18, probably around 18 19 years old. And at that time, the Rebbe wasn't giving out dollars, but instead, for, on special occasions, the Rebbe would sit by the door of his office and people were able to walk by and push it, look at the Rebbe, see the Rebbe, and the Rebbe would see them. So this Pekisha was allowed to go by the Rebbe, the Rebbe was sitting by the door of his room, and they passed all by. And this, this young man, who wasn't from, wasn't from, he, 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 he was completely overtaken, and he quickly ran, got back into line, so he can go again, even though that wasn't really allowed, <laughs> where it's supposed to go more than once. And he went by the Rebbe a second time, and from that moment, he decided that he's putting on tefillin, and he became from. And today, he's a from a yid with a mishpacha, married to from a lady with a ganzer mishpacha. And what was it from? Not from hearing Torah of a tzaddik, not from learning from a tzaddik, but simply pasha looking at a tzaddik. I was in Yechidut, my wife and myself with the red in his room. You couldn't look at his face. It's light. I, I was looking. I couldn't. I have to move my face. You can see the really light. Right. Yeah, so that is the concept of a tzaddik. The concept of a tzaddik is that if you want to have das, you want to really, really connect to Hashem, you need to have, you need to have that rabbi, you need to have that tzaddik who not only teaches you Torah, but reveals, reveals alakus to you, reveals godliness to you. And again, even the Torah that the Rebbe teaches is different than another person's Torah. Because when the Rebbe is teaching Torah, the Torah is just a vehicle for the alakus that's within it. And that's apparent. As opposed to um, as opposed to other people, so it's interesting, it's fascinating. But but, but when you listen, when you're learning Torah from a Rebbe, if it's an Amasir Rebbe, someone who's taka nitzus from the neshama of Moshe Rabbeinu, it's something else entirely. And this is the key to how to get das. So the Alter Rebbe began by saying that we need to get das. So number one, where does das come? It comes from Moshe Rabbeinu. And Moshe Rabbeinu, there is a there is a, a channel within every single one of our neshamas which receives das from Moshe Rabbeinu. In addition to that, says the Alter Rebbe, in addition to the das that we receive from Moshe Rabbeinu, there is the effect, the effect that Moshe Rabbeinu has on us through the nitzutzim, through the sparks of his neshama that come down every single generation, and furthermore reinforce the das that we all have. So that's step number one. Step number two, you want to have Das. Number one, you have to know the reason why we have Das is from Moshe Rabbeinu. Otherwise, we couldn't have Das in Hashem. Because otherwise, it couldn't become real to us. It's only because Moshe Rabbeinu, his neshama is from Atzilus, from Das of Atzilus. And we have a little of Moshe within us that we have the capacity for Das. Moreover, this is bolstered by the tzaddikim of the generation who also are Nitzutzen of Moshe Rabbeinu. But then there is step number three.
And that's what we're going to learn inside right now. Step number three to acquiring das. Where, where do you get the das of the others? If everything comes to Moshe Rabbeinu, where, where was the source of das for Avraham Avinu Yitzchak? From Moshe Rabbeinu. But Moshe Rabbeinu came much later on. So Moshe Rabbeinu didn't exist earlier. His neshama was another. His neshama was there. Ah, however, two lines from the bottom. Ah, however, Iker hadas the main das ain't no idea levada. It's not about something that I know. Sheyedu gedulos Hashem. It's not about knowledge that I have about the greatness of Hashem, which I learned mipi seifrim or bisfarim, which I learn. From the mouths of uh, of scribes and the mouths of svarim, in other words, from the mouths of people, even from a rebbe, or the mouth of a, or, or from learning from a sefer, who the main way you get das. So this is step number three, and this is the most important step. Step number three in getting das, Hashem to take the time to think deeply into the greatness of Hashem, uleskoya machshavtei b'Hashem. Some words we know are difficult to translate. The word laskoya. It, it literally means like tenelit. <laughs> Te, what? Tkoya is, is like uh, taking a nail and knocking in a nail. <coughs> it's almost like it's saying as if to, to knock a nail into your head and connect it to Hashem. To connect your machshavet to Hashem. To really wedge it deeply and to uh, attach it. Bechoyzek with strength. Vaimet salev. And the courage of the heart, v'hamoyach, and the brain. Ad shetehei machshavtei mikusheres b'Hashem to the point that a person's machshava becomes connected to Hashem. Bekasher amitz v'chazak with a strong and powerful connection. K'moi shehi mikusheres b'davar gashmi, just like the mind is connected to physical things. Shirei be'ein ibasar. Which you see with your eyes, and that you think deeply into it. So, every time that you see something physically, that makes a deep impression on you, and that's very kind of, you're you're deeply connected to what you see. How much more so if not only you see something, but if you take the time to contemplate that which you're looking at, a physical thing, it is possible. Through again, through these three steps, through the fact that our neshama is rooted in Meishar Rabbeinu, in the da, gets das from Meishar Rabbeinu, and through the tzaddikim of the generation, and then when a person goes and thinks deeply about the greatness of Hashem, it's possible that, that you should be as connected to Hashem, and that Hashem should be as real to you as something physical, which is in front of your eyes, which you're contemplating. You're smiling. Why are you smiling? No, no, before you answer, let me give the answer for you. You're smiling because you're a little skeptical because you've done this. You've taken the time to think very deeply on a regular basis into the greatness of Hashem and you haven't seen it happening yet. Oh, no. So, so, what's, so what's the smile about? saying just you know look at this bracha I mean if we actually if we actually experienced this bracha we say many brachas that are pretty amazing well let's just take that one if you actually experience that bracha like the fact of that bracha that God is taking care of all your needs how could you be worried about anything and I mean if their bracha says God takes care of all your needs or even just you say the word Hashem if you just if you actually experience the word Hashem in a bracha how could you have a problem your whole life your, your whole existence. How could you possibly have any problem? So here, it's what he's saying here, and that's basically what he's getting at here, is you could experience the Shemakim like you see something. I mean, that's very palpable. Yeah, and that's, that's why I was smiling. It was, that's an incredible thing. You can see that. You can see his attributes. You can see his attributes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can experience the Shemakim like you see something. That's the yeah, but how do, you, how do you relate to that? Because they're, they're also black and it's like stuff. You see his attributes, you see, you can't see that. 
That's how you're going to see. That's how you're going to see with your eyes, per se. He's saying that you can experience Hashem on the same level that you see, like, the same how do you palpability. I, I hear you, Sam. How do you relate to that? I mean, great. How, how do you relate to that? I see you see a person over there. How, how would you see Hashem in the same equivalent that I see something that doesn't I, I understand that. How do you relate to that? What do you mean, how do you understand that? There's a flat process. Yeah, you're going to understand the Shem from his attributes, but directly? Uh, directly. How will you understand the Shem directly? <laughs> how? Really how? Like in your mind. It's good to do it. You can do it as a Shem. You know about, about what happened. The, uh, his creation, his attributes. It's incredible, right? That's, that's why I was Yeah, saying. that's so, incredible. Okay. But you're not going to see it. To put it in different words, how does a Yid go and say, Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad? What does Hashem Echad mean? Even on the very simplest level, the, the Kavana, which is brought down Halacha, they have to say, they have to be Mamlachim, that the heavens and the earth, and Hashem is the king over everything, and he controls everything. And Enoid Mulvade, right? And there's definitely the belief, that, or the fifth of the Yid Gimel Ikrim, that there's nothing he has any control. And how is it that afterwards that Yid goes in, in business, and he's worried, and he's trying to play tricks, and he's saying, I can't learn Taira because I have to... This is all, this is all a blatant lack of Das, Absolutely. That means that you're, it hasn't become real to you. And says the Alter Rebbe, the way that it becomes real to you, so again, he gives two things. Number one is something which is innate, it's B'Koyach through Moshe Rabbeinu. Number two is to connect to Tzaddikim. You need to connect to Tzaddik for it to become real. And then what's the third one? And if, I mean, just to elaborate, when you're in the presence of a Tzaddik, there are no sveikis bamuna. There are no questions. There's nothing because it's all it's all clear. It's all clear. And the third one he says over here very clearly is laha migdaite to think deeply into the greatness of Hashem, and that's going to be the topic as we go on. In other words, that's the beginning of the topic. But you should know that it's within the ability of a yid to have das. But the greatness of Hashem is uh, looking into the bria. What, what, like the of the there are many different there are many different meditations into the greatness of Hashem. He's choosing, he said, that Hashem gave him his shoes. That's also great. Whatever it may be that the, that the, 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 his bainanus is, but when you're misbaining that, but the main thing is that you take time, you think deeply into it, says the Alter Rebbe that you can reach a place where Hashem is as real to you as something which you see physically. Yeah, inside. Kenoida, five lines from the top of page 118. Kenoida, as is known, Shadas, the word Das, Ulash and Hiskashus. Das is related to the idea of connection. Kemoi, as the Pasuk says, Adam Yada Vegoimer, that Adam Yada as Chava, he knew Chava, which means he connected. The Koyach Ze Umidas, with this Koyach and this Mida, the Kasher Daiti Bahashem. To connect one's mind to Hashem and to have das, yes, bekol nefesh me beis Yisrael. Every yid has the capacity to do that. Why? Because, as we mentioned earlier, every yid draws das from the neshama of Moshe Rabbeinu. Rak, however, because the nefesh. Has entered a body. Tzricha liyegiya rabba vatsuma kafula mechupalas. You need an incredible exertion, doubled and redoubled, in order to be able to arrive at this madrega of das. But ultimately, when a person arrives at this madrega of das, when they connect to the Moshe Rabbeinu within, to that little the unique of Moshe Rabbeinu, and you have das, then, as we mentioned at the beginning of the period, then yira becomes a milzuzutrisa. Which is understood, because if Hashem is a reality, if Hashem is something real, then to have Yiras Hashem, at least at the lowest level, Yira Tata, is Taka a milchas literacy. So Moshe Rabbeinu was turning to Yidden and saying, "What does Hashem want of you to fear?" And I, you guys think it's hard, but for me it's not hard. And if you connect to the me within you, then you'll be able to do it also. So the Rebbe is going to divide. The avoda in order to, to get das into two parts. 
First, he said about he just give a very general, um, a very general uh, instruction, guideline, and that is it's about thinking deeply into the greatness of Hashem. And now we're going to go more in detail. And as it turns out, that before the thinking deeply, great thinking deeply into the greatness of Hashem, there's another step. Achasi, step number one is yigi as basar, an exertion that involves the flesh. Levat ishes aguf to break the guf, velachniyoy, and to uh, denigrate it. Shalayachshich al eir anefesh that it should not. Darken the light of the nefesh. Commission is barely ill, b'shem azayar, as we learned earlier in Perek Chavtes in the name of the zayar. That gufa the lesolik be in the head of the neshmasa that a body that the light of the neshama is not catching on. Mevachinle, it has to be crushed. Vahainu, and how do you crush the aidei here? Who do you tshuva? Moi makalev through thoughts of tshuva from the depths of the heart. Commission is bar sham as explained over there. So this is step number one. Step number one is the understanding that the neshama and the gu- the neshama and the guf, or also the nefesh al kis and the nefesh bahamis, they have different agendas. And one strength automatically comes at the expense of another's of another strength, as the as the pasuk says about Yaakov and Esav, ulaim melaim yamatz. Which means that uh, they'll constantly be fighting with each other. And as Rashi says over there, it says, In other words, Yaakov and Esav, they can never both be great and they never both be small. When one is great, the other is small. When one is small, the other is great. And the same thing is with Nefshal Kis, Nefshal Bahamas. When a person has a strong goof, and when I say strong, we don't mean physically, chas v'shalom, because, I mean, physically a, a person should have a strong goof. The Masjid Shemagid actually once said that a kleina, a kleina lechela in the goof is a greisa lechela in the neshama. A small hole in the body is a big hole in the soul. In other words, if a person physically has a, a ailment or a weakness, that impacts the neshama, that impacts a person's ability to daven and to learn and to serve Hashem. So when we're talking about breaking the body, we're not talking about breaking the body in a physical way. And as you know, the Baal Shem Tev was very, very strongly opposed to fasting and to different other sorts of, of sigufim and self-abnegation. But we're talking about completely delegitimizing, humiliating, and deprioritizing the body and anything that's associated with. That's not important to me. If I want das, if I want to connect to Hashem, I need a disconnect from everything else. Because all the other connections all get in the way of being, being able to connect to Hashem. That's a good question. So, and the level of this Patek, that there is an Esoyim. Although there, in other Prakim there are other understandings of it. When you're at a different place in Avaidah, but when you try, if you're trying to get Das and you're not able to, you're trying to connect to Hashem, you have to know that step number one is you have to weaken your connection to Elam Hazah. Which again, weakening your connection to Elam Hazah doesn't mean, uh, you know, locking yourself up in a room and, and learning Torah the whole day. But it means not indulging. Not indulging. What was the question? He says, what were all those things created for if I'm not supposed to indulge in them? That's a, that's a good question. By Chesidim, there's a there's a saying in Yiddish. Vas mentarnit tarmenisht, that which you're not allowed, that which is not allowed is not allowed. And das vas men meg, darf menisht, and that which you are, that which is allowed, you don't need, you don't need it. Now, but it's important to understand that the point here isn't to deny yourself for the sake of denying yourself or to make yourself miserable for the sake of making yourself miserable. It's not even about that there's a problem with that thing which, uh, th- th- that, that particular thing. It's kosher, it's fine. But for me, at this point, I have to understand that for me to connect to something higher, I have to disconnect from the lower. If my entire life is about lower, lower types of pleasures and lower types of, of, uh, of goals and aspirations, that all 
inhibits my ability to be able to have das and to be able to connect to Hashem. In the words of the Chavis Halvavis, which you mentioned earlier, the Chavis Halvavis says that just like fire and water can't both coexist in one keli, in one utensil, so the same thing, Avas Hashem and Tanugu Elam Hazah can't coexist in the same heart. Love for Hashem and the pleasures of this world can't coexist. You have to make your choice. And if you want Das, Das means connection, you want to connect to Hashem, the first thing is you have to disconnect from all others. So, and people say, they, people say they do, and people say, oh, I love Hashem, they're, 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 they're not accurate, or if someone says that he loves Hashem, they say, I love Hashem, and they're into, into Elam Hazah, then at the most, that they're loving Hashem for giving them Elam Hazah. That's at the most, then. Is that anything? That's something. But it's not, uh, the, at the end of the day, then the purpose of Hashem is that he's the provider of the flesh. Still, Sorry? Still that's, yeah, that's definitely a level. It's better than not loving Hashem. But ultimately, the idea of das, the idea of real connection to Hashem, and that's something which is by chassidim is, um, is a very big idea. In other words, you know, we have the Ramban who talks about being a novel of Rosh The Ramban talks about the notion that you can keep all the Torah and mitzvahs and still be completely, uh, you know, uh, be a behema. What does it mean to be a behema? What is a novel? You're doing. A, you're not doing anything that's asi. You're not doing anything that's that's forbidden. But who leaks to? Where, where are you? In other words, where's your? Uh, what, what's important to you? What's your goals? What's your? Uh, what's your pleasure? And uh, if you sit and you learn Torah all day, but then you go and you're you're at tonight, you're all excited, and you're gonna go and you're gonna have some 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 meat and some wine, and okay, I'm not saying not to the, that the, the world is there to, to not to engage the world, but the the point of a chassid is to connect Hashem. The more you connect with Hashem. The less you're connected to everything else, the less you're connected. And by the way, hopefully we reach a point. You could do all those things, but without the das, without being connected to them. Now, and in the larger sense, in the larger sense, the biggest thing that gets in the way of our connection with Hashem is our connection to our ego. Connection to our ego, our connection to ourself. And that's what the Rebbe says in Peter Klamates. And sorry, in Peir Chavtes, this is the idea of Mevach If you want to reveal the Neshama, you want to reveal the connection, the, what you have to do is you have to, you really have to humiliate the body. Humiliate means that it's not important and realize how despicable and reprehensible and disgusting and unimportant the body and all its desires are. And that frees you to then go and to connect with Hashem. Yeah, so what if someone is, does this serum and interestingly we're not talking here about loving Hashem even though I mentioned it a few times but here we're talking about fearing Hashem do those two things go together and how about the people who, who cheat on their spouses and you know they abuse them and everything and they still claim that they love them and that happens that happens you know that do they really love them in your mind, that goes together? Okay, now, at the same time, every Yid has a deep, kind of, deep love for Hashem. But that's not, the, that's not their, uh, their, 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 the reality of their lives, obviously, if they're doing Averis. Moving on. Vahashen is, what is step number two? Hiyigiyas nefesh. The first step was an exertion of the body, as mentioned. The second one is exerting the soul, exerting the neshama. Working hard and making sure that the, that the work isn't too hard. Liga machshafta to exert one's mind. Lahamik to contemplate and think deeply. Begdulas Hashem sha gedela retsufa a long. An uninterrupted hour, continuous. How long do you have to think about the greatness of Hashem to arrive at Das? Ruvin, that's probably your question, right? How long do you have to think? Here's the answer. 
Kishir shazu ain't neshava bechol nefesh. This shear is not the same by every person. Yesh nefesh zaka b'tiva. There is one neshama that by nature is sensitive, refined, pure. Shemiyat shemis benenes begdulas Hashem. Immediately he starts thinking about the greatness of Hashem. Yagia eleha hayira upachad Hashem. Immediately. This person will have yira and pachad from Hashem. Which means das. Because again, fear comes from das. Fear comes from, why, why, why do I fear Hashem? If he's a reality to me. So that certain people, who they think a little about Hashem, the greatness of Hashem, they already have das, and immediately they have a yira and pachad. As it says in the very first simon of Shulchan Aruch, that when a person contemplates, that the great king, Malach, Malach, Amlach, Makadish Baruch, the king of kings, Akadish Baruch, Asher Malay, Chala Aretz Kvedai, whose glory fills the entire world. Aim the love when a person contemplates that this Hashem is standing upon me, Virey be myself and watching my actions, Miyad Yagia Ilav Hayira, Vichulu. Immediately he'll be overcome with, with fear and awe of Hashem. That's what it says in Shulchan Aruch, that when a person wakes up in the morning, so the Shulchan Aruch says you have to jump out of bed right away and go and start serving Hashem. And what if you don't want to serve, you don't want to jump out of bed? Anyone here relates to that? What if you don't want to jump out of bed in the morning? So think about the greatness of Hashem. Hashem is the king of all kings and the whole world. And Hashem is here in my bedroom standing over me, watching me and waiting for me to get up and serve Him. So immediately says Shulchan Aruch, this person will have fear. This is for someone who has a pure and sensitive neshama. V'yesh nefesh shveila b'tiva v'tildasa. Then there is a nefesh. Then there's another neshama, a lowly neshama. By its nature, v'tildasa, that's the way he was born. Memakar chitzvah, and the reason why is because its source, where it is taken from, is memadreges tachtoinesh, the yud sviris dasiya. It's from the lowest levels of the ten spheres of the lowest world. The only way for such a person to find the elokus, the godliness in the mind, is difficult and it takes a lot, a lot of perseverance. You notice that he says over here, doesn't say he can't find the knowledge, the wisdom, he can't find godliness, because das means finding the godliness, connecting to the godliness. Especially if a person has um, become tame, has become defiled by the sins of the youth. And Khatas Nurim is a reference to a specific Avera, the Avera of Hitzah Zerla Vatala. Shavainis Mavdilu Vukulu. Averas in general separate us from Hashem, and therefore they don't allow for Das. As it says in Sefer Chasidim. So all Averis, what they do is they have the effect that they make us grub, they make us, uh, they desensitize us to Hashem and make it so much harder to connect and for it to be real and to have Das. But of all the Averis, Chatas Nurim is something special up there because Chatas Nurim is an Avera. You know, we're trying to get Das, we're trying to uh, attach our mind to Hashem, that Hashem should be real. But the problem is that sometimes the mind, certain Averis specifically involve the mind and involve the mind being involved in things which are completely inappropriate, the opposite. So those are an impediment more so than any other Aveda. So a person that Aveda with the hand is Einzach. A person that Aveda with the foot is Einzach. But when the person has defiled the mind, which that is really what uh, what Chatzis Nurim is about, and then you want to have the same mind to connect Hashem that makes it so much harder. So therefore, says the Alter Rebbe, there are some Nishamas that are naturally sensitive and holy. All the shamas are holy, but naturally sensitive and more uh, and more uh, purified. The other neshamas that, by nature, they're lower neshamas. And then, if the person has compounded that by also doing averus, it makes it so much harder. Umekalma came and still says the Alter Rebbe, It might be difficult and it might be hard, but if the person puts in the difficult work. The person really, really focuses his thoughts with tremendous strength and tremendous exertion. 
very deeply to think into the greatness of Hashem to think deeply into the greatness of Hashem for a considerable amount of time take a look at the word it is certain that at the very least the person will arrive at least at the lowest level of Yira which we discussed in Perik Memalaf what the lowest of level of Yira is at least the Yira the very, very lowest level of Yira is like Rabbi Yechel ben Zakkai said to his Talmidim that should that the fear of Hashem should be like the fear of a fellow human being. At the very, that's for sure. So regardless of the level of your neshama and regardless of past experience, if you put your mind to it and you take time and you think about the greatness of Hashem, you will get the Yira. What is Shah Gedela? What is Shah Gedela? The reason why I'm smiling is because there's actually a sikha from the Fidik Rebbe on this, which isn't printed yet. And the Fidik Rebbe asked this question What does a Shah Gedeila mean? Is there an hour that is, is can there be an hour that's more than 60 minutes or less than 60 minutes? So what does Shah Gedeila mean? And he answers, but I don't remember offhand the answer. I remember the question, but if you contact me after Shir, maybe get my contact information. I have it. I have it written down. What the Fidik Rebbe what the says that I can get. I can get it to you. But Shah Gedeila on the simple level, Shah Gedeila means the word in 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 Lashon Hakodesh in general. The word Shah doesn't mean necessarily 60 minutes. The word Shah means a period of time. Shah Gedeila means taking an extended period of time. But again, there is something for the Fidik Rebbe on it. I'll try to remember to look it up for next week. We know that. Um, it takes time. It takes time. And uh, this is something which when people hear about this, they, they become, they get turned. It takes a lot of time. Who has time? Time is money. Who has time? But uh, the bottom line is that we have to realize that when something, anything that's important in life, we put time into. Anything. We put time into learning for our career and for our professions and we want to if you want to do something special and you want something whatever it is that you want to accomplish it takes time you want Yiras Hashem it's going to take time it's not something that's going to come in a minute the only thing is is that what is the time spent you know if I were to tell you you know if you walk a marathon you'll get Yiras you, you get Yiras Hashem I have a feeling everyone here would start training tomorrow for a marathon I'll, so I'll run 27 miles but you want me to sit for 10 minutes and to think <laughs> <laughs> that's something which is beyond me for some reason we're scared we're scared of, of Pashat and that's really you know we'll talk about the Chassidim Arashayim they would sit before Davni they would for, for an hour and that's really what Chassidim demands Chassidim demands that we take time and obviously the appropriate time of this is before Davni and during Davni but Chassidim was always a big thing before Davni to take time and Pashat to think Chassidim not to learn not to anything it's easier to learn five prakim tanya than it is to think for five minutes. To sit and just to, to, focus. to focus and to marinate, to concentrate, to absorb, to, uh, to let it all sink in. But that's what das is. That's where the secret is. And some people takes less time for holy, pure people, and some people takes uh, more time. But regardless of the person, it's there. Okay, top line, top line of page Samach, as our sages told us, Yagati umatsasi tamin. If someone says, I tried and I've accomplished, believe. believe that person. And as we know, the rest of the Mamer Chazal is that if a person says, Yagati vilei matsasi, al tamin. Al tamin. So a person says, I tried this and I tried to get Yiris Hashem and it didn't work, al tamin. And then there's the past success who could deceive. If you search for it, look, search for it as you search for silver and treasures. And then you will be able to understand and have Yiras Hashem. Pirush, meaning, says the Alter Rebbe. Like a person who's searching for. A, a, a hidden or a hidden um, treasure which is hidden under the ground. 
that he digs after it, be a giyat summa with a tremendous amount of exertion. The same thing. You need a dig with a tremendous work. Legala is to reveal the treasure of Yerushalayim. Hatsafun umustar bebinas alev shall call Adam Yisrael, which is hidden in the heart of every single yid. It's there. It's there. It's just a matter of revealing it. And if you so, if you know, if you dig enough, you'll find it. And the digging is through his bainus, is through contemplation. Emir Tashem, next class, we will continue talking more about the nature of this contemplation of the Hizbaninus in order to get Das. And we will, Emir Tashem, also connect it next week also to the Aveda of the Yamim Nairaim, which are upon us. So everyone here should have a Ksivach Simateva, Roshana Teva Masuka, Gut Gebenshtiar, and everything. And always, and the main thing is, a gu'ula for every one of us and a gu'ula for Klal Yisrael. Amen.